Live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's live video program. Go out to all the big enterprise IT shows, help extract the signal from the noise. I'm Stu Miniman, Senior Analyst with Wikibon, here at the Virtualization Technology User Group, Winter Warmer 2015. Uh, it's the ninth year uh, that this event has been at Gillette Stadium. Uh, it's the second year we've had theCUBE here. We've got really, a, it's a great user group to talk about what's going on in virtualization, cloud, SDN, hyperconvergence, a lot of the big trends it help give some of the good educational training, what's going on, good thought leaders here, lots of vendors uh, say, saying the latest in their wear, and it's a new year and we're happy to be here. And joining me for this introductory segment is Chris Harney. Chris Harney is the founder uh, of the VTUG and the leader of, of this uh, long time uh, you know, uh, group that we've loved to do work with. Chris, uh, thanks for joining us and, and congrats on uh, all the success here at VTUG. Stu, thanks. Um, you know, the success is really the users. They drive the attendance, they drive the content. So it, it's nice to have a, a user group that's run by users. Yeah, and, and Chris, it's it's a great venue and it's great content. I love, we've got, you know, Teddy, Teddy, Teddy Bruski right behind us here, full tilt, full time uh, for, for the show. Uh, the Patriots are going to be going to the AFC Championship this weekend against the Colts. Um, we, we were talking a little bit about the game <laughs> planning and, uh, you, you know, you never know what's going to happen on Sunday. We'll, of course, be rooting for the Patriots here because we're homers. Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, you know, let, let's talk about the, the conference, Chris. Uh, you know, we've had you on a couple times before. Uh, what, what are some of the highlights from you, give us some of the stats, how many people are here um, at the VTUG event? So we just have just over a thousand people here this year. Um, we are talking lots of different things, you know, we heard Joe Onisek talk about um, software-defined uh, software networking, but yeah. policy-driven IT. We had a hyper-converged panel that was really interesting. We had, in the morning we had Dan Stoltz talking about why you need to learn cloud, Chris Colati talking about why certifications still matter, and Hans saying, listen guys, Virtual networking is here. You need to learn this NSX because it's, it's going to be here whether you want it or not. Yeah, and, and Chris, one of the things we really like about this, this is an independent event. So it is not driven by you know, a agenda. Uh, there's, you know, the, the VMUGs are, are very much a VMware centric environment. Yes. VTUG covers much more than that. So you want to hear about cloud, you're going to get, you know, last year you had Amazon doing a keynote on cloud. This year Microsoft did a keynote on cloud. And you've, of course VMware's here in, in the mix, but it's you're getting good, fair and balanced uh, you know, representation. Absolutely, you know, the one thing we try to be is agnostic. We don't, we don't want to skew the message. We want to make our users educated so they can make better decisions for next year and the year after and put themselves in a spot to be successful. Yeah, so, so Chris, we were talking a little bit before, it's, some of it is education, some of it is training, because it, you know, it, there, there's dramatic change going on in the industry today. Um, you know, talked with Joe Onisic uh, with uh, the networking side and the panel that I moderated on hyperconvergence. Many of you as administrators, what you're doing today, if you think that's the job you're going to have three years from now, you're probably going to be out of a job. I've had this discussion with so many people, it's not even funny. You know, if you look at your data center six or seven years ago, and you had stacks of servers, well, try to think of what it's going to look like in another, another five or six years. You have no idea. We had no idea how much virtualization was going to take over our data center. We have no idea how much hyper-converged and cloud are going to take over. But you know what, If be on the forefront, you know, be a beta customer, learn that technology, and have some say in what's going to happen in the industry. Yeah, uh, it, it's real interesting times here um, because you know, I, users are often holding on to what they have a little bit longer. I, I mean, the challenge you have is you buy something and you feel like it's it, it's what I have to do. When I build a data center, you know, that's the data center I'm going to have for 30 years. Right. When I buy a storage array, you know, is it three, four, or seven years before I'm really going to pull that out? Um, when I buy servers, it might be a slightly uh, shorter uh, time frame. But uh, what I loved, we talked about in the hyperconvergence panel. It's moving from kind of those upgrade cycles, which are discrete 
painful occurrences where I have to migrate and retrain uh, to really more, uh, Dell uses the term fluid architectures more. Hyperconvergence talks about creating a pool of resources or uh, what VMware calls the software defined data center. It's really about uh, making an environment that is going to be able to grow with me over time. I can add changes in, but not have to be as manual. Uh, and therefore, that, that, that is going to be a big change to what uh, you know, IT practitioners are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we talked, you're right, we talked about this, and I think what, what the hyperconverged does, by bringing all those technologies together, it gets you off the hamster wheel. You know, you're not doing storage this year, servers the next, backup switches, storage, servers, backup switches. You now can add business value. You bring in a hyperconverged solution, the technology changes some, you're, you're now really changing the data center, virtualization makes sense, and now you can add um, policy-driven IT. You can now stop doing right-click deploy, stop addressing VLANs. You know, th it really makes a big difference in your infrastructure. Yeah, so uh, from, from an attendee standpoint, is it still, uh, I'm curious what you see trend-wise. It used to be, you know, it was storage administrator, gave way for the virtualization administrator, right. you know, cloud architect shows up more. Uh, what, what's the makeup of the attendance here? You said there's over a thousand, is that users that are here? There's or? over a thousand users That's here. That's great. Um, it, it, it hits a gamut. You know, I would love to see more networking people showing up to have a voice in this. Um, I think they're still holding on to that last hold, and, and they, they don't think that uh, networking virtualization is going to be true. Uh, I'm telling you, we didn't think virtualization was going to affect our worlds this much, but if you get on the forefront, you'll, uh, you'll see what's really happening up there. Yeah, Chris, you bring up a great point what's going to be true? So, you know, <laughs> you, you go to, you talk to the vendors and it's all, you know, pie in the sky, this is why it's going to be great. Um, but, tell me kind of what mindset, you know, you talk to a lot of users, you, you consult with them, you do various things with them. How do they understand, you know, what's real and, and, and what's hype? Th that's a great question. Um, I don't think you can predict it, out, predict it out more than three years. You know, we used to have a five year plan or a 10 year plan. Technology changes so much and you have to be willing to swing with that. So let's, let's plan for three years and know that in a year that might change, that information may change. I don't think cloud's going away, whether it's a hybrid cloud, um, but putting policies and procedures in place to protect your data, that's important. Whether it's on-premise or off-premise. And, and knowing where that data is going to sit, I don't think it's going to matter in five years. You know, Docker's making a, a big splash. Um, so we'll see what happens in, in 12 months. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Joe Onisic mentioned uh, Linux containers and Docker this morning, and yes. I think there were you know two or three of us in the room that weren't from the vendor community uh, that had even heard of it. What's you know what what do you see as the hot buttons? What are the users asking to hear uh, for, from the events that you put on? The users are still asking for training. You know, they want to say, I've got this stuff, this equipment, these software pieces, and I don't know how to use it to as my best ability. Um, a lot of them haven't looked out three years. They're just trying to know how to take better advantage of what's in their data center. Yeah, it, it, be, better utilization of what, what I've got today, great point. Uh, Chris, talk to us a little bit about, about VTUG in general. You've had chapters uh, in a, other parts of the country. Give us the update on that. Yeah, so it looks like VTUG is still growing. We did Chicago, we did Indianapolis, San Jose, uh, Virginia and Florida maybe coming on this year. Um, again, it's not, it's not a vendor-driven community, it's a user-driven community, and, and they just want to have more say in what's heard and talked about in their in their meetings. Yeah, it, it, it's a tough thing. I mean, I look at it, you know, we, we know a lot of the, the VMUG leaders, and right. those are people that gave of their own time, gave of their own, uh, you know, will. Um, it's the user-generated content and user participation is so huge. It is. You know, I spent a lot of time looking at the open source environment and you know, more and more people are not just using open source but contributing to open source. I it's saw a huge. survey last year said that you know, within, I think it was two years, you know, half of enterprises will be not just using but contributing to open source. So you know, always love those ways that people can get involved. How, how do people get involved more in the community, Chris? You know, I would just go to www.vtog.com, sign up to be a member, we will send you out more information. We've got a lot of changes coming up with the website this year. We want to put uh, an events board, a job board, and there's forums coming up. Um, and then just go to a meeting. You know, if you want to start a chapter, let us know, and just start meeting on a basis, and uh, we'll help you out. Okay, Chris, it's, it's always great to catch up with you. Uh, we've got a bunch of the keynote people here. You're nice. pulling in some of the users for us, so we put the users back in the user group, uh, which I always love. Uh, thanks again for, for, for all of what you do for the community, and appreciate you bringing theCUBE uh, again uh, to help us there, and uh, you know, go Patriots. Yeah, absolutely. All what's right, your, what's so. Your Prediction for the scores, too. Oh boy, I uh, hate to, let's see, put, <laughs> we put this down. Uh, what I always say with the Patriots in the playoffs is if the Patriots can score at least 21 points, it's the type of game that we can win. So I'm going to go, you know, 
uh, 24 to 17. I think it'll be think close. Uh, close enough that you know one one score could still swing it. But uh, I, I I see the Patriots going to Arizona, and uh, you know hopefully uh, you know the Patriots can bring back uh, you know another mm -hmm. ring for for the team. So uh, we will be here all day at the V Tug at Gillette Stadium. Uh, so uh, stay tuned uh, for our next guest. We'll be right back after this quick break.